لوين؟ فور وايت التكالب التكالب يعني كيف يعني؟ التكالب ان 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 انجلش مينز لا شريعه الغاب لا ذا جنجل This law, the jungle, that I want everything for myself, and I'm running. I'll take the food off my brother's plate. Why? Because I need to survive. The Quran brings and says this is fiction. You're living in imagination. يعني كيف يعني if we were to tell the boys, boys, there are five jars of gel left in this world. Five. How many of you will suit up? With your bulletproof vest ready to go grab these five. How many? Unbelievable. Our children, our 15, 16 year olds. Absolutely. Why? I cannot live life without the material thing called gel. If we were to tell the, the female, no, this is the last, you know, our females are very much uh, know their religious duties, but for some reason they always forget about this. Uh, eyelash thing, uh, I don't know. So if this is the last mascara thing, what would we do? Every, most likely every female would, would, would prepare her husband. Yeah, get moving. You're calling up a work today, there's five left, go get them. This is the law of the jungle in this Quranic verse. Allah says, التكالب في الدنيا, what you're doing in this life, for what? For what? This is under fiction. While in reality, in the non-fiction issue, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Says, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul is tasting death. <laughs> Meaning, it's trying to draw a realistic picture for you. Where are you going? What are you going to gain? Because while you're trying to achieve your fictional things, you're going to step over people. Thus, you're going to be doing what? You're going to be... Performing the haram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not come. This kind of fiction and not fiction divides into two parts. One is an action that we just drew. One sometimes might have a perception of fictional things. In one, for example, this is the way I am, this is how I go to heaven. Well, as long as I believe in the Ahlul Bayt, it's okay, I don't know all their names, as long as I believe in them. That my perception is, oh, that's judgment day when, when or, or as they say, when, when the angel of death comes to take my soul, I don't think it's going to happen. Although on a daily basis I see people dying in front of me, I pray over them. I enter the mosque, not to pray, but so they can pray on me. I say, no problem. No problem. I'm, I'm, I'm still living a fiction that I'm going to live, I'm going to wake up from this dream, and I'm going to find that all of this is not true. Whatever they're trying, no, you don't die. It's just a dream that we're all living. The perception, this perception, the Quran draws us wrong. كل نفس ذائقة الموت. This law of the jungle that you're trying to achieve, where is it heading? Where is it headed? As the Quranic verse is saying, لا وين وين بعدنا where are we trying? The only problem is we put ourselves in this situation. We believe in this. And the problem is, you know, the next morning you wake up, you turn your radio on, go on the work, and you forget everything that you had. Only if you can have a memory card within you that every time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws a light within you, gives you something good, you just register it, that you bring it to you every time you need it. That's the worst thing. The best thing a human being ever had or has is memory. And the worst thing is the memory. I can't retrieve it anytime I want, and I can't get rid of it anytime I want. So here's the Quran draws this through this Quranic verse. Perception wise, tonight is the night of Al Qasim. Al Qasim was a young individual, no older than these brothers sitting over here. 14, 15, Yusuf, he was 15 years old, your age. No older, right? But Al Qasim, and you may be looking at me and think, oh God, is this guy going to give me another one of those, you know, Qasim? Well, that's, that sounds corny. Al Qasim, with this or that. Qasim, bear with me for a second, 15 years old. His perception of life differed Yusuf than yours and mine. Absolutely. Although he was 15. At 15 years old, he grabbed the sword to help his uncle because he knew, he knew what his uncle needed. He knew what the religion of his grandfather needed. Now, his grandfather being who? 
the Holy Prophet. His father is who? Imam Hassan. His grandmother is Sayyida Fatima Zahra, and Imam Ali alayhi salam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Yet we find ourselves within the fiction and not in fiction. We bring in Qasim and we put him in, an, in, a, in a fictional story. And we all heard this, and I'm going to be crucified for this. We hear about the first thing that comes to mind when I hear about the 15 year old Qasim is what? Is that the wedding of Al Qasim on the day of Ashura. I come and I say, what happened on the day of Ashura? They say Qasim was supposed to wed his cousin, Hussein's daughter, by the name of Sukaina, mashallah, kinnam rabbi. Sah? Yet I don't have it within me to tell this fictional story, get out. Why? Because the masses, the masses are against me. They say, oh, what did you just say? There was a wedding in Karbala, and Qasim, Imam Hussein wanted Qasim to marry his daughter. From this podium, I tell you, without being insulting to that idea, I don't know how these things got into our religion. Qasim السلام, did not come to Karbala to get married. But because me and you are living a Romeo and Juliet life ever since they came up with this thing called television, and, and they showed us this is the way it is, Romeo falls in love with Juliet, and you can't get married unless Romeo falls in love with Juliet. So later on, after this television thing evolved, we came and we said, oh, Qasim, 15, 16, Sukaina, 12, 13, oh, they have to get married. And it's embedded in us, and none of us can see anything. I am very sure plenty of you in the audience right now have in the back of your mind, this guy does not know what he's talking about. Maybe so. But I have a message to deliver. I don't want you to live a fictional life. I've researched this thing over and over and over. And there's nothing called Qasim getting married to Sukkay. As a matter of fact, it came as an insult to Imam Hussein that you would see something like this. I know in some states, I may get capital punishment for saying this, because you can't get away with it nowadays. But I stand and I say, please eliminate something like this from your mind. Why? The fictional story says Qasim got married. The non-fiction says, Al-Imam al Hussein says, Ala, ala tar, tarawanna anna al-baatil anna al-haqqa la yu'malu bih. Imam Hussein's slogan in Karbala, what's wrong with you? you? You're mixing up between right and wrong. It can never be. So the fiction now is two parts, action and perception. From this Quranic verse that leans towards the non-fiction, that every soul shall taste death, kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut, I ask the following question. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran reiterates the word death? Because the word death doesn't apply to me because I'm only 15 or 16. Right Yusuf? Doesn't apply. I don't die. You don't die when you're 15. I'll prove it to you. I'll stand outside in front of a car. Let it hit, right? I'll prove it to you. You've never seen a 15 year old die? Never seen a 10 year old die? So why does Allah always reiterate the word death? كل نفس ذائقة الموت. Why? Because technically, the 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 fictional side of me says, oh, I'm not afraid of that. I don't recognize it. It doesn't happen to me. The non-fictional side says, No, it does happen to me. Imam Al Hadi alayhi salam has a beautiful poem. He says, باتوا على قلل الأجبال تحرسهم غلب الرجال فما أغنتهم ال they made from the high mountains their abode and they armed men so death will not arrive at them. Meaning these high mountains did not avail them. They brought down from these high mountains. He's drawing a picture. They left their fortresses and they were dragged down. They were thrown into a, a, 